All right. So today we're really diving deep into a topic that, um, you know, it's one of those things that can seem a bit abstract until it directly affects you. And then suddenly it's all you can think about. We're talking about third party cyber attacks. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, most people don't really think about until it's too late. Exactly. It's not your system that gets hacked directly, but a vendor, some third party you rely on, a company you might not have even heard of holding your data. It's like, imagine, right, you've spent years, you've poured your heart and soul into making your house a fortress. You've got the security system, cameras, the works. You feel good about it. Right, you feel pretty secure. But then you've got this contractor, need some work done, you give them spare key, and they're, well, let's just say they're not quite as diligent about security as you are. Uh-oh. They leave a window open, mm -hmm. forget to lock up one day, and suddenly your fortress isn't so secure. Right, that back door is wide open. And that's third-party risk, except instead of your living room, it's your data that's up for grabs. And this isn't just, you know, losing some old vacation photos. We're talking about sensitive information, medical records, social security numbers, financial data, blueprints, the kind of stuff that can really do damage. Absolutely. And the impact. It could be devastating, like dominoes falling. Look at the movie it breached last year. One event and it snowballed, affecting healthcare providers, government agencies, financial institutions, you name it. And the fallout from that. I mean, we're talking people's entire medical histories exposed identities compromised it's a nightmare and it really highlights how no one is immune to this no matter how big or how security focused you are i mean even okta okta the cybersecurity giant yep they got hit because of a vulnerability in you guessed it a third party vendor they used wow if okta can fall victim it really drives home the point that this affects everyone everyone any organization using external software or services, whether it's cloud storage, email, even something like payroll processing, has potential exposure. So it's not just about someone getting their hands on your data directly. It's about the domino effect of all these interconnected systems. Exactly. And that actually brings us to the first of the major challenges here. Indirect access and visibility. It's like, OK, think about lending your car to a friend. Right. OK, I'm following. You hope they're going to be responsible, drive carefully, all that. But you're not in the driver's seat anymore, you know? Huh. You've got limited control over how they're actually handling things. Yeah, you're basically putting a lot of trust in their judgment, hoping for the best, but you're not monitoring their every move. And you probably don't have, like, a GPS tracker on the car to see their every turn. Right, you're limited. Yep. And it's the same with these third-party vendors. You're trusting them with your data, but you might not have clear insight into their specific security practices, their data handling, how they'd even respond to an incident. So they're kind of a black box in a way. You're relying on them, but you don't necessarily see all the inner workings. Exactly. Exactly. And then on top of that limited visibility, you layer the whole digital supply chain thing. Because yeah. it's not just your contractor, it's their contractors and so on. Oh, right. It's like this whole tangled web of interconnected companies all relying on each other. Yeah. And modern businesses, mm. they're built on this web of vendors. But that means that if one vendor gets hacked, well, their customers get affected. And then those customers' customers, it just ripples out. Like a domino effect. Exactly. Think about the SolarWinds attack one breach in a software company, but it had this massive ripple effect across the entire like global tech landscape. Right, one weak link, the whole system can crumble. But okay, let's say you somehow you do discover a problem, a breach. It's not like you can just instantly fix it, can you? That's another huge challenge, huh? delayed detection and response. Think of it like, imagine finding out your car was in an accident, but like weeks after it happened. Ugh, I hate that feeling. Knowing something happened, but you were totally out of the loop. Right. You're dealing with the damage, but it's also frustrating because it went unnoticed for so long. And with these third party breaches, they often take longer to detect because you're not directly, you know, like watching those systems constantly. It's like finding a leak in your roof, but only after it's already caused like a ton of water damage. And by the time you do find out, it's often spread, become a multi party issue, really messy to clean up. OK, so we've got limited control, limited visibility, potential for these huge delays and even realizing there's a problem. This is sounding worse and worse. But then on top of all that, let's say the worst happens. There's a breach. Who takes the fall? 
Is it you, the one whose dad it was, or the contractor who maybe wasn't so careful with the metaphorical keys? Oh, that is the question, isn't it? Shared responsibility and liability? That's a whole other can of worms. Because it's not always crystal clear who's ultimately responsible when a third party is involved. Right. Was it their negligence, or were your security expectations not clear enough in the contract? It gets murky fast. Especially with all the regulations around data privacy these days. Oh, absolutely. You bring in GDPR, IPCO, all of that. And suddenly you're not just dealing with the breach itself. You're looking at potential legal battles, fines. It's a nightmare. I got to say, this is all a bit overwhelming. It's like we're living in this, I don't know, digital house of cards. And any one of these vendors could be the thing that brings it all crashing down. So what can you even do? Are we just supposed to be constantly looking over our shoulders? It's definitely a wake-up call, no doubt about it. But it's not hopeless. Not at all. There are definitely steps organizations can take things they should be doing to manage these risks, hmm. to shore up their defenses. Being proactive is key. Okay, because right now I'm feeling anything BUT proactive. So give me some hope here. What can organizations actually DO about this? Well, let's go back to our contractor analogy for a second. Yeah. You wouldn't just hand over the keys to your house to just anyone, right? Well, no, I'd at least check their references. Exactly. You want to see their track record, their experience, make sure they're legit, you know, Maybe check if they're licensed, insured, all of that. Due diligence. Right. You don't just take their word for it. And it's the same idea with vendor risk management. It has to go beyond just checking a box on a form that says, yep, our security's great. Don't worry about it. So what does real, like, proper due diligence actually look like in this whole world of third-party vendors? It's about asking the tough questions, digging into their security practices, you know. Do they have a history of breaches? How do they handle incidents when they de happen? What are their security protocols? So really getting into the nitty gritty detail. Exactly. You need to make sure their security standards actually meet your organization's risk tolerance and, of course, any regulatory requirements that are relevant to your industry. Makes sense. Doing your homework up front. But even then, even with the most thorough vetting, things happen. People make mistakes. New vulnerabilities pop up all the time. And let's be honest, hackers are constantly upping their game, right? Oh, absolutely. The landscape is constantly evolving, and that's where continuous monitoring comes in. You can't just vet a vendor once, assume everything's fine, and call it a day. So it's not a one-and-done kind of thing? Nope, not at all. Yeah. Think of it like having, a, say, a fancy alarm system in your house, right. right? You don't just turn it on and forget about it. You're checking the batteries, updating the software, making sure it's all working as it should be. Right, you're staying vigilant. So you're being proactive up front, but then also staying on top of it, keeping an eye on things. But with these super complex supply chains, you're relying on everyone else in that chain to be doing the same thing, right? I mean, it's like you hope your contractor also vetted their subcontractors and so on. You hit the nail on the head. Collaboration is absolutely essential. When a breach happens, it shouldn't turn into a blame game. Organizations, vendors, they need to be on the same team, sharing information, working together, coordinating their response. It's like a neighborhood watch, but for cyber threats. Exactly. You're only as strong as the weakest link in that chain. And in the digital world, we're all connected in some way. So we really are all in this together. Wow. So much to think about. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. The very real dangers out there, how complex these attacks can be but also, thankfully, some concrete steps organizations can take to try and get ahead of it all. It all boils down to being proactive, mm -hmm. due diligence, continuous monitoring, and crucially, working together. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Big thanks to you for breaking down this complex topic with us. Thanks for having me. And to everyone listening, stay curious, stay safe, and until next time, keep those digital defenses strong.